Hey, Ben Samuels has joined in. Hello, Ben. Welcome to your first hangout. Hey, how's it going? Can All right. Me? So, nice to meet you in person, actually. Isn't it likewise? Uh, where are you <laughs> hanging out from? I'm in Lincoln in the UK. But you don't have a very strong British accent. I'm American originally. Uh -huh. I've only just moved here a couple months ago. So, oh. so uh, what brings you to the cool cast? How did you stumble across it? Um, somewhat via Change Eleven, and uh, yeah, I think I actually found you because you put up some recordings of the sessions, and uh, then followed you on Twitter and just saw your tweet. So I said, thought I'd say hello. Well, thank you because I was getting kind of lonely. <laughs> I, yeah, so I'm not really familiar with the cool cast other than just that you've put up those recordings. Yeah, I started the cool cast this past summer during Edumook, uh because there weren't that many opportunities to interact and have conversations, and I'm all about the conversation. And so I kind of just said, and, and Google Plus and Google Plus Hangouts had just started, and I wanted to play yeah. with them. So I said, well, let's do it and see what happens. And... Um, People kind of just show up and talk about whatever's on their mind, and it's been kind of fun so far. Yeah. So what's your day job? I am an e-learning resource developer at uh, Bishop Grosteste University College. Well, that sounds like a pretty cool job title. Yeah, so far so good. I, I started in this position uh, about two months ago. Um, new to the field, actually. And uh, just moved to the UK about you know three months ago, so it's sort of part of a uh, part of a big change. And my previous background is mostly outdoor education, really. So, outdoor education being things like uh, team building. Um, I've worked a lot with uh, kids with special needs, and uh, you know, it's using experiential, adventure-based activities to uh, develop social skills and you know, sort of communication skills. And uh, even, you know, sort of worked with corporate groups doing the same thing. So, What inspired the transition from outside to inside? Um, well, I was moving here to Lincoln and, and uh, needed a new job. <laughs> so that was a big, a big part of it. But that, you know, that sort of inspired an entire sort of reevaluation of, you know, what I was really interested in and which direction I wanted to go in the future. And I kind of ended up a little bit more on the business side of things anyway. Uh, an outdoor adventure the last couple of years and um, so it was a combination of uh, seeing you know, identifying the things I really wanted and was interested in doing and uh, finding a position locally that, that fit that really well and being lucky enough to, to get it so it's always nice when life works out hello Carol happy new year hello and happy new year to you Jeff and Ben is this hi ben? how's it going it is going great. I may have to pop off because I'm on a long business call and they put me on hold, but I'll just mute my video and my mic and hang in and listen to you guys. How's it going in South Korea, Jeff? Uh, it's going well. It's a little I, bit late. It's already tomorrow. I have to, I have to pop off for okay. just a minute. <laughs> so you're um, actually you're in South Korea. I'm in Busan, South Korea. We're yeah. just past midnight. Okay. Um, so what kind of e-learning is happening where you're at? Um, well, we don't do distance courses here. Um, it, we're a small university college, uh, about 2,000 students, and uh, the, the main emphasis is on, is a, is on education, actually, is on te training teachers. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of blended courses because we have a lot of students that are um, already either teachers or um, you know, professionals in some sort of, you know, uh, either in schools, you know, as in administration or working with youth in other capacities that then do their masters through us. And so a lot of it is, is uh, it's, I guess, blended is what you'd say. What kind of tools do you use? Are you using Blackboard? Blackboard. Or? Yeah, Blackboard. Yeah. In fact, I just, uh, just came from last week from um, the Blackboard Users Conference in Durham, um, which I have to say I was... A little bit not <laughs> that excited about going to, um, but that chose as their theme this year open openness, and uh, it was really really good, really great conference actually. Um, All right, help me help me. I I'm so biased against Blackboard for yep. a variety of reasons. Help yep. help me become more neutral or appreciate their virtues. Um, 
Well, I don't know that I, you know I can do that as compared to other other VLEs, but um, and I think this conference apparently has a really good reputation of being practitioners, uh, you know, getting together and um, you know sharing great stuff. But uh, for example, the the opening keynote was by um, her name is Granya Kanol, I believe it is, who's going to be one of the one of the uh, facilitators for Change Eleven um, in coming up in March. And she's based at uh, University of Leicester, um, and she entitled her uh, her keynote um, "The VLE is a Trojan Horse," and uh, really looked at how to sort of use the VLE to uh, you know encourage people to enhance enhance their teaching and learning. Um, you know, she talked about the VLE Plus as it really sort of uh, combining the VLE with other cloud and Web 2.0 um, tools. Um, but you said it convinced you that well, Blackboard. I'm curious to hear about their open because my biggest complaints about Blackboard has yeah. been that it's really hard to have your classroom experience there and interact with the internet at large. It was impossible mm. to aggregate content from Blackboard out into the world. Um, I guess you could aggregate it in. And then my other biggest complaint is that you set up this environment where students do all of their work in Blackboard. And as soon as they're unenrolled or graduate, yeah. they have no access to it. Have they yeah. addressed any of that? Not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, there was a, a couple things I saw that were good. There's something called LTI, um, which is uh, Learning Tool Interoperability, which is a new standard um, that allows developers to create apps that will um, it, it basically standardizes the way that an app uh, can interact with any VLE. And I think, you know, the, all the major VLEs have sort of gotten on board to come to a standard now so that one app can be developed that then can be used with Moodle or with Blackboard or you know whoever else is developing something you know similar um, which that's a big step forward in a way in openness um, one of the cool uh, examples they they described is that you can actually then create uh, an app that will allow collaboration between students in a class um, that are actually on from two different institutions, and if you know, with each with their own Blackboard, or even if one's on Blackboard and one's on Moodle, um, they can still have a place where they do collaborative work with the discussion boards or shared blogs or something like this. Um, what has to happen for that connection to happen? Do, does one class the, say, "Okay, we will connect with this other class"? Well, it looks like from the you know from like I'm like sort of a Blackboard administrator and from our perspective it's, it looks like it's really easy to set this stuff up. So, I mean the real work is happening by the developers and that's mostly I think just following these standards. Um, and uh, so the things that are, you know, the information that's able to be passed back and forth are the login sessions for example. You can log into Blackboard and then you can go to some other app where it gets your, it gets your, you know, your login credential or whatever so you don't have to then log in again somewhere else. So they're trying to make it sort of seamless that way. Um, also, uh, you know, things that were actually there's assessments involved, and so another example of this they had was a was a peer assessment tool. Um, assessments and you know sort of can get handed back over through a standard format back into the grade center in Blackboard, so that you know stuff can kind of get you know get shared back and forth across from the app. So it, interesting, it, it's it's new, so it's uh, I think it's it's just at the point where there's a few a few working examples of it now. Well, um, I, I applaud any efforts toward openness, and I would say ethical participation in the <laughs> learning economy. Uh, and I, I don't know if, Ves if Vanessa can hear us. Vanessa is trying to join in with a really slow internet connection. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's say a quick chat. Hello to her. Uh, and in the meantime, Carol, CMC has wrapped. Well, it, it has formally wrapped. It is informally still in existence. We've had a couple of blog posts, and I sent a notice out that uh, I would continue to send out the new posts, which is the uh, newsletter, when there was activity. And then I had a little glitch in the C panel. Uh, it had reverted back to um, going every hour. Anyway, let's just say I had a little glitch that I had to fix, and so now I'm able to harvest and aggregate things on a weekly basis rather than a daily basis. Um, and for those who don't know, CMC was the cross creativity, creativity and, and multicultural, multicultural communication. communication MOOC 
that happened this past fall. And Vanessa was and Vanessa was a part of it. And and looking back on it, how was the whole experience? Lessons learned? How will you do it next time? I think the experience for me was absolutely fabulous. I mean, I learned so much. I got so much out of it myself. I saw the people who who did actively participate. A ninety percent of them, ninety five percent of them got a tremendous amount out of it as well. It was transformational for many of them. Um, the end, the final projects, which not everyone saw, were, were dynamite. They truly were dynamite. Um, lessons learned. It took an awful lot of time for one person to be handling it. <laughs> it's definitely not. Uh, we're getting some freezing, Carol. And Ben, I'm curious, are you frozen also? No, you. No, I think I'm sitting still. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not frozen. I'm still moving. You're back. Uh, yeah, Thank we we, we we lost a sentence or two from you, Carol. You know, you mentioned oh. that the the final projects were great and nobody saw them. I'm one of those people who didn't see them, uh, and I I would love to have checked them out. I assume it's all I would be on the happy site. to send you the URL for them. Uh, I have to clear that with the individual students first, if you don't mind. So, so, so you know, and, and along the lines of openness. So this was a MOOC, but but the projects and these were actual students at the university. Correct. These were students at the State University of New York Empire State College, and because of the FERPA challenges. Um, I made a decision that their final projects would be private unless they chose to publicize them. Now, some of them did put in their blogs and in discussion areas uh, and possibly even in Facebook their slide shares. They did post the slide shares that they had used. Um, What's FERPA? Uh, FERPA is um, the federal. Uh, Education Act for Privacy for Students in the United States. Where are you located, Ben? I'm in the UK now. Ah, okay. But I, I am American. Well, so you would, but you might not have encountered FERPA. It's it's a relatively I I don't know how many years it's been in existence, but it wasn't there when I first started with the college. <laughs> <laughs> and and it is an issue that we need to address. You know, the students when they are registered for credit in an institution of higher learning in the United States, the FERPA regulations um, need to be contended with and the students need to be able to opt into either showing all their work publicly or not. And, and so you they know, have I mean, that, I'm okay that with option. that. I mean, I feel like openness should be opt-in. I just feel right. like the the infrastructure and this the tools should should make that as easy as possible and that's my complaint about blackboard and moodle f to to that extent right. as well is that it's really hard for it to exist like i i would love to for blackboard or moodle to support students blogging out there in the real world somewhere that they can keep their content and they own their content and bring it into their lms um, absolutely but why why can't you do that? I mean, I there's a I mean there's no, nothing that says it, you know, you can't I mean maybe if there's something like FERPA in place, but you can, you know, there's nothing stopping you as a teacher using a, you know, regular blogging tool blogger or whatever and if you want you need to have a link to it in your Blackboard course so that they know where to find it or something, you just put the link in, right? Yeah. Have you have you played with the aggregation functions at all on Blackboard? Like if no. if your students have a blog, can you create a page that aggregates everybody's blog posts? Ooh. Not that I not that I know of. Not that I know of. No. Do you, do you use Blackboard as well, Carol? Yeah, I had used Blackboard. We were using Illuminate originally, um, uh, but Blackboard when it became available. Yeah. Um, Although I mean, Illuminate were, and Blackboard are kind of part the of the same, same thing now, and kind of part different and tools, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Although some people are still using the Illuminate uh, version, which uh, is not pre quite as Blackboard Collaborate. Right, pre Blackboard Collaborate. Um, so I, I wanted to go back and ask Ben. He just attended the Blackboard conference. What is the sense there? Like, I mean, in, in my other, you know, big gripe with Blackboard is that, you know, they, I thought they were unethical in their pursuit of patent claims five or six years ago. Uh, really trying to own a lot of stuff that I, I I don't think should be owned in terms of of learning. 
Did you get any sense of them addressing that or kind of saying, you know, we've learned that lesson and we really want to play nicely with others in this space? No, I didn't. I didn't hear that. I mean, I don't think that that wasn't. I didn't hear that brought up specifically. So you know, they would. They probably wouldn't have brought that up, would they? But um, I mean, the you know, the representatives from Blackboard were there, and you know, they gave a presentation on the because the the theme of the conference was openness. So that's sort of where this comes from. And so you know, they talked about how they thought Blackboard was open. And um, I mean, the other things that they point to as being open are that um, you know, they they have a invite people into a community to sort of, you know, beta test the new versions to tell them feedback and, uh, you know, ask them for what features they want. Um, so come help us build a better product that we can make money from. Mm -hmm. And what are they returning to the community? You know, I, I guess in their eyes, a, a product, you know, a good product, right? Uh, you know, we, we are, just, uh, are just in the process of upgrading from 8 to 9.1. And it was before I arrived here, but, you know, they, they looked quite carefully at, other options, including Moodle, and you know, would that be better? And I mean, they just from a, just from a sort of a cost analysis, they decided that actually it would probably cost them more to have to uh, you know host and support Moodle um, than it would just to continue to buy the, the license from Blackboard. Um, so you know, I it, they provide a service that you know is valuable to us. I mean, that, now that the the internet has has evolved so much. And that you know, the primary use of, of Blackboard here is it's pretty limited. It's it's mostly you know, post up your course materials and some links to other places. Uh, you know, some people use the discussion forums. A few few people have used the blogs in there, um, but at this point, you know, none of that stuff couldn't be replicated for free. You know, using other tools. Um, it'd be and, a little you know, more I do freeform. understand that they they provide administrative functionality as far as grades and we don't use the grades at all. So really? for, for us, no. Well, I mean, no. <laughs> Something we've they've thought about just a little bit here. I mean, we're not a uh, we're not on the cutting edge, and you know, in this institution by any means. So well, some so places do. Using, excuse me. How are you using Blackboard then? Well, like I said, it's. I mean, it's that is the main um, portal for you know interaction. Digi you know, digitally between the, the teachers and students, um, but but not beyond the institution. Not beyond the institution. No, you mean like with uh, distance learners or correct, would, correct. Yeah, no, we have some some blended some blended courses, um, but even those, I think you know, most of that consists of having uh, PDFs, um, you know, posted online in the in their course. You know, um, so and there's you know, like I said, there's some use of the discussion boards and some of the blogs and wikis and stuff. Um, but it's not, you know, majority is, is, is pretty traditional teaching and just, just using the, uh, you know, just using the BLE as a place to sort of host the course materials, um, which, uh, so in your right. position, are you just kind of, uh, as an, as an internal mechanism of communication? Oh, sorry. You cut out there, Carl. I heard the very last part of that. Oh, and, and now I'm not. I'm seeing your lips. So you're just move, using it as an it. internal communication. Uh, Th this is a Google Plus Hangout anomaly. I have not seen this happen before. Sorry, uh, Carol. We are getting uh, your your video and your audio is out of sync, uh, which is is weird. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Did you get her? That is weird. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. <laughs> you are definitely out of sync. Am I synced up yet? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you, you're not synced, but we're hearing you, you know, pretty clearly. And I don't know if you got her question, Ben. I didn't. What was the question? Sorry. Uh, it was more an observation. So you are using Blackboard only as an internal communication mechanism. Yeah, yeah. I would say so, yep. And by the way, you're synced again, uh, Carol. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> and and my question, Ben, is is your position at this university just kind of the e-learning manager, or are you actually teaching courses? I'm not teaching courses. I'm here um, in a large part to support the transition, you know, the upgrade from eight to nine point one, and it was sort of consciously uh, decided that we'd try to use that upgrade as an opportunity to um, encourage people to enhance. Their teaching methods a little bit, so I'm sort of uh, I love I love the idea of the the VLE as a Trojan horse. So I'm kind of <laughs> looking for ways to try and figure out how to you know inspire, encourage, and support people to to do a little bit more. 
Um, and there's have, have you found a way to integrate, like, you know, climbing ropes and walking through on bridges and stuff? <laughs> uh, tell me more what, what, what that is, the VLE is a Trojan horse. What was her point? Um, well, I mean, just that, having that perspective of, um, I think, being, you know, a learning technologist and, you know, thinking and wanting a lot to, to uh, just, you know, get people to really become more conscious and, and, and try new things and, you uh, Figure out ways to, you know, use some of the new some of the new tools that are out there uh, to to in you know in their teaching, um, and that sometimes uh, you know people are sort of dug in. They have their have their practices, the things they've done for a long time. It works, um, and there's you know there's a lot of barriers to to change. Change is a little bit risky. You know, you you risk failing and <laughs> making mistakes. Um, there's you know people sometimes lack of, lack of knowledge and skills uh, to to use these new tools. Um, so, you know, how do you present, how do you present that case of how do you actually sort of inspire and motivate people to, you know, to take the risk and to try some new, some new and, methods. And how's that aspect of it going so far? Two months in, people are starting to use the latest version of Blackboard. Is there a sense of, well, we're wow, not, the, we stuff. actually, we actually upgrade um, in, at the end of the summer, basically. So we the beginning of next, next term. Um, so at this point, we're sort of introducing the new version of people, letting them know the upgrade's coming. Um, and I've, you know, I've had just enough time to sort of uh, settle in. I'd actually never touched Blackboard before that, so um, figure it out myself, um, which you know hasn't been too hard because it isn't really that um, all that complicated. Um, and uh, you know, get get, get my uh, get my uh, sort of foundations in you know in the area that I'm working here. Um, so I've kind of just passed that point now, I think. Um, and uh, I'm just starting to ask myself that question exactly is how can I, you know, how can I challenge people? And if, if one of the challenges for me is that there's, you know, there's, um, you know, there's a cycle. So people, you know, they teach their courses. And here it's, uh, I'm coming out of the American education system. You know, I, I went to SUNY Albany, actually, was the, my un for undergraduate. Um, and uh, it's, That's you know. That's my you, neck of the woods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you have your, you know, you have your major, but you, it's a liberal arts education, and you choose which courses you take, and each course is its own individual unit with people from lots of different departments. Here, it's it's really organized by by program, um, and so people coming in have sort of chosen which which program they're in, and they're all together pretty much in the same, uh, in the same course. Um, so those. There's, it's a little bit less. Uh, uh, anyway, I mean, you know, by semester or semester, um, you know, people already have their plan for what they're teaching. So to to change that practice, they need to fit that into that into that cycle, right? Where they're planning what they're going to, you know, do in next semester. And people, you know, I think the teachers here do. Um, depends on the course, but some of them make changes each, you know, each year, and some of them don't. I mean, some of the courses I think remain pretty much the same as they were the previous year, um, most of the time. So figuring out how to insert, you know, insert this idea into that into that cycle um, is is one thing I've just been starting to str struggle with a little bit. So. How many faculty will you be uh, working with? Um, well, I mean, my, yeah, I mean, my position is really open-ended. So, um, but uh, maybe, maybe fifty, maybe seventy, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's a fair number. You know, in in total, and uh, you know, some of them I might have, you know, almost no, you know, just very little contact with, and others, I, you know. I can I, I can say one thing I appreciate about the position that I'm in is I have a lot of freedom at the moment um, to figure it out myself. So that mm -hmm. uh, that's great and that works that works great for me. Um, anyway. Sorry, I came in late and I was very rude and had to take that call. What uni are you with in uh, the UK? Well, I'm in uh, which uh, university? It's it's yeah. uh, called Bishop Gross Test University College in Lincoln. So. Okay. We're a small, uh, relatively small school. We've got about two thousand students. And uh, a large part of that is a uh, is a teacher training, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Which to me is one of the most interesting parts of it because that's that that's the point where you get a little bit meta, but that you have a chance because I think it's so important that the next generation of teachers, you know, is exposed to this stuff. Um, the earlier, the better, really, right? So, the stuff that I can do with them is really has the potential to you know. Uh, to make it, well, yeah, Ben, make it if you'll if you'll send me your email or get in touch yeah. with me, um, I can hook you up with somebody at the University of Salford who might be able to give you some ideas on how to do that. She yeah, uses Blackboard, that. but she's also doing teacher training, oh, and okay. she has some dynamite ideas yeah. that she has implemented. That'd be great. 
So, have you had much contact with the teachers who are taking these courses yet and, and any sense for where they are in terms of technology? Are they eager to jump in and take the next steps? Are they overwhelmed? Is there support in the schools for technology? Um, I, you know, it's it's still new days for me, so I, you know, I don't have a lot of experience to speak to. Um, my, I don't get the sense that there's a lot of people that are excited, you know, <laughs> and I'm I'm excited because I see that you know so much potential and and change happening you know incredibly fast. So um, I you know I haven't haven't picked up on much excitement out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anxiety, perhaps. A, just... a bit of that. A bit of that. Um, you know, like uh, we've won, um, you know, one course that used uh, Glogster. Are you familiar with this Glogster? It's a mm -hmm. poster, yes. poster making. And so um, they used that and did an assessment. You know, it was actually an assessed piece of work where the students, you know, created a poster around a, around a topic. Um, so that's an example that there are some people doing, you know, trying some different things and um, you know, out on the edge a little bit. And well, there's, I mean, there's definitely some anxiety in there. Glogster service seemed to go down like the, for a couple hours the day of the the day of the assignment was due and so that was <laughs> panic stricken and that's I mean that's one of the risks you take when you're depending on an external you know on an outside service right it's uh you can't really control it so so what's on your to-do list for 2012 Carol oh well my my to-do list really right now is to concentrate on change 11 uh, to go back and pick up some stuff in DS 106 uh, I'm working on writing a chapter on, um, ah, Vanessa has joined us, uh, working on writing a chapter on uh, the MOOC, actually two chapters on the MOOC for two different organizations, and uh, that should keep me pretty busy. Hello, Vanessa. So Vanessa has a really slow internet connection. I had suggested that she mute her webcam to minimize bandwidth usage. Right. And I'm I'm dying to see if we can actually hear you, Vanessa. And we're not hearing you yet. Now this could be an audio configuration issue, maybe not a um, bandwidth issue. Uh, if you haven't fiddled with it yet in the Hangout window, you might want to click on Settings. Yeah, Vanessa, I believe, is on dial-up. Yeah. Which, you know, when I realized she's on dial-up, it, it made me think, wow, you know, she's been such an active participant in, in change and CMC, and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm spoiled with, you know, bandwidth to burn here in Korea, uh, but you really... <laughs> uh, you can you can still join in with pretty limited resources, and I was reminded well, then of that. Share. Yeah, I mean, I was reminded of that during our EVO launch webcast uh, yesterday, and this is a, a language learning online free workshop kind of thing for language teachers, and we really had people joining from all over the world with uh, you know all sorts of different connections, and you you find ways to connect. So what is the EVO? Because you mentioned that uh, before. It's it's just one of my favorite online events. It is um, it's Electronic Village Online. It's uh, sponsored by TESOL, which is the big uh, language teacher English yeah. language teacher organization, and in in conjunction with Webheads in Action, which is this community of practice that's grown out of TESOL. And TESOL is you know a big professional organization, and they have budgets and they make money. The Webheads are a really grassroots, no money is involved, just a bunch of uh, English teaching cyber hippies who've been connecting weekly and and beyond for years now and it's this big messy chaotic open thing of uh, let's learn together and I'll put the link in here in our little webhead chat or, or uh, hangout chat I've, I've tried to get into that and each time I look at the clock and I go oops nope <laughs> didn't work hello again Vanessa S 
uh, still not hearing you, Vanessa. I wonder if you, uh, we do have a little hangout chat here. While we're waiting to connect with Vanessa, uh, have either of you tuned into Change 11 recently? Have you uh, been tuning into the Howard Rheingold week or whatever happened before New Year's? Yeah, I have. Um, I, uh, I kind of did a catch up with uh, all the 2011 material in Change 11, which isn't that going to become Change 12 now since we still have another um, six or seven months to go? And <laughs> it's an issue, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Some are calling it Change 12, but Change 11 seems to be hanging in there. Yeah, I saw the first Howard uh, Rheingold one, which was, yeah. uh, which was cool. And, and his main thing was, was talking about kind of net literacy, yes? And, mm, and the for yeah. for social, a social, social literacy or social, you know, social, social part media of literacy. Thing. Or, yeah, yeah. He was he was a great uh, great presenter, a great facilitator. Yeah, he's. I, I remember reading his book uh, back in the, you know early mid nineties or something, and that really was the first uh, glimpse at what was ahead in terms of online community. So you didn't see the session then, Jeff? I did not see it live because it was happening like four a.m. here. But what I did was yeah. catch the recording, and I just illuminate just for me is never a friendly environment to yeah. especially to catch a recording so I just used Screencast-O-Matic which I'm using now to record and um, just capture it and toss it onto YouTube for those who prefer to catch it, catch it that way. Yeah. Yeah. He did do some of the interactive uh, blackboard work where you could you know go on the participants went mm -hmm. on and wrote things on the blackboard and so forth and so on. Did we lose Vanessa again? Uh, she's out of the hangout. I see her in the text chat at EdTech right. Talk. Um, she's saying no sound, mic on and working. Um, so Ben, how long have you been in that position? I'm sorry, I missed the very beginning. Uh, two Is months. Two months. Yeah, maybe it's five or six weeks now. And how, how long have you been in the UK? Uh, three months. Three months. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so are you from Albany originally? Albany area? I uh, actually grew up in Poughkeepsie, New York. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, went to school in Albany. <clears throat> Lived in the Berkshires for many years of Massachusetts. Uh, be beautiful countryside there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So if we weren't streaming live, I'd ask you how you wound up in London or how you wound up in England and what her name was but we'll, we'll save that for an <laughs> off the air conversation well, that, you, you guessed you guessed right I do get to ask that question quite a lot a bit I think particularly because of if, if I was living in London that would be that would be different but I'm in uh, Lincoln which is in the East Midlands so it's yeah. you know it's not a place that attracts a whole lot of uh, you know immigrants necessarily and I do want to say hello to a couple people in New Mexico and Canada who have just stopped by. I can see you visiting EdTech Talk, and I just put the Hangout link in the EdTech Talk window. Please feel free to join the Hangout. Say hello. Oh, great. So how does it feel to be back on Coolcast again after uh, you away for a while, Jeff? Good. I, I just kind of had a very – actually, the end of the year and the beginning of the year for me is kind of um, – uh, extra busy time, so I thought it yeah. best to take a step back. Uh, it's nice to be webcasting again. I'm yeah. actually going to be doing it for a week or two, and then I'm going to be traveling for three weeks. I'm heading back to the States, actually. Oh. Um, so probably go on hiatus again until the end of February, when okay. and the new semester here kicks in in March. And so I'm, I'm aiming to get into gear uh, for this and some other projects in early mm -hmm. March. Going back to the Northeast? Uh, doing a Los Angeles, Las Vegas, New Hampshire tour. Ah, uh, cool. Super That'll Bowl be nice. in Vegas. Oh, ho. <laughs> well, I'll miss you again. I really did miss you while you were while you were oh, on well, hiatus. 
I kept looking and thinking, well, you know, I just haven't found him somewhere. He's got to be somewhere. And, it, you know, we st <laughs> I still feel like I need to find a better time. Uh, this is not an especially North American friendly time. It's not an especially Korean friendly time either. No. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of it just depends on my, my work schedule as well. So sure. I may play around with the times a bit. Sure. Oops, excuse me. I have to do muting again. So now this is your first Hangout, Ben? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I should say. So what do you think of Hangouts? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, super, super easy uh, to do. And it's the fact that it sort of pops whoever's speaking up to the, up to the top there is uh, automatically. That's pretty nice. And yeah. And so it, it records, it can record within, within Google or you do that separately? I do that separately. Okay. Um, and it's not, it's not that complex. It's a little, uh, trickery. Um, but like compared to Skype, I've had much, I, I feel like it's lighter. I feel like it's a better audio, better video. It's multi-camera support for free, whereas that's a premium feature for Skype. Yeah. Um, and they're planning on adding the, not only the recording feature, but also the live streaming feature. They're going to be building that. Uh, which which is, so you're doing that separately on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing some advanced geekery. Yeah. yeah. So were you a geek when you were an outdoor guy also? or? You're... Yeah, I've always, I've always just liked, liked technology a lot and followed technology and, you know, sort of, you know, kept my finger on the pulse. And I've had, I have an aptitude, you know, for sort of picking that kind of stuff up quickly. Um, so that was, you know, when I came here, I, I kind of applied for like any job I could possibly get because I needed a job. Um, so I was, it worked out really great, but I, you know, some kind of looks at doing anything in sort of an IT and, you know, whatever. So, yeah, and, and this is, and, you know, it being outdoor <laughs> stuff I was doing, it was still really about learning. And uh, so I have had, you know, a long, long time passion for that and working with kids. I have a, a extensive summer camp background and that's sort of my own summer camp experience was sort of, kicked me off in that in that field in the first place so although that's not sort of formal education it really is about you know about learning and especially about um, learning in, in a community you know forming a community of learners so yeah that's uh and it's, it's good to have balance you know yeah you just need to get outdoors <laughs> have you have you been able to keep the outdoor spirit alive at all in uh, England? no not really not yet <laughs> but uh there, there is some really nice places to visit. I just haven't, uh, haven't yet had the time. So, Jeff, on the uh, the open education, have you been following any of the OER University? Uh, um, I saw a couple of their meetings. I popped by one briefly, and honestly, it was a little bit boring. And I popped right out. Uh, what about mm -hmm. you? Well, I'm sort of following it because um, I'm still with Empire State College, and they are one of the uh, what do they call them founding members, um, and they're planning on offering courses, at least one or two courses per founding member institution, uh, come September in the fall semester, for that'll be open and free to the world. Um, as with everyone, I think they're in discussions and. Um, negotiations for assessment to see how assessment works is there going to be any credit involved and before we answer that it looks like Vanessa's coming back I just want to see if Vanessa can hear us at all hello Vanessa here's a picture no I'll take that as a no oh well, we see video Vanessa hello hello Vanessa Well, that's that's some measure of success. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing during the um, EVO webcast. There was a woman in Croatia who, whenever she had her video on, her audio was terrible. But as soon as she muted her video, the audio cleared right up. So they must mm. have some kind of load balancing situation going on. I don't know. 
Well, Vanessa's very still. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like a picture from the 1890s. <laughs> <laughs> it's that sepia toning. Yeah. <laughs> So to get back and answer mm. quickly your question, as far as credit is concerned, no. What they're talking about is um, each institution would then do the credentialing. And if the institutions are going to credential, if people want the credentials, then they um, deal with that institution and there's some sort of small fee to do a, an assessment of the learning that has occurred within that course. So those are all details to be worked out. But, but that makes a whole bunch of sense. That seems sure. like a model that will work. Absolutely. It opens it to the entire world, free and open. And it's win-win. Um, I mean, you have, to, you have yeah. to provide an incentive for the universities to, to do this, and they need to charge money and give credits. That's Absolutely. kind of what universities but the, do. But instead of charging per credit, what they'll do is they'll charge per evaluation of learning which makes the credit bearing part of it much less expensive for the credit seeker. Um, and they're working with volunteers who will be facilitators within the courses. Uh, so they're looking at global volunteers to work on the courses. And they'll be using Moodle as their platform, which I found rather interesting. I'm not sure how open Moodle can be to the entire world, but we'll see. Do we know what the course is going to be? Uh, there were a list of courses offered. Um, I know they're looking for some math. There was at least one or two math courses offered. Uh, critical thinking. Um, there might have been a language course. I just don't have that at my fingertips right now. But there were approximately 15 to 18 courses that were tentatively listed as being offered from the various institutions. Well, that sounds very promising. And most of them seem to be pretty global in nature, as far as uh, interest was concerned. Hello again, Vanessa. We do see you. I don't know if you hear us or if we hear you. She does not see us. In any event. So if, would it help her if I turn my video and mic off? Would that give her a little extra? I don't think so. I, my, my guess is, because we're not hearing her at all, and she's not hearing us at all. So I think this is actually more of a, a sound hand. issue than a bandwidth issue. If mm. it was bandwidth, we'd be hearing something choppy, uh, and we're just not hearing anything at all. Um, so perhaps... I'm amazed that on dial-up she can even get a picture going, <laughs> having worked with dial-up for so long. Yeah, it's but been Jeff, a long... you 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 work primarily face to face with your English teaching, or do you my, also do online? Well, my day job is teacher training to okay. Korean English teachers in the public school systems, uh, and that is all face to face. Uh, I introduce as much geek stuff as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all face to face. I also teach an online course uh, for call computer assisted language learning through Southern New Hampshire University, which is one of the partners in um, OERU. In OERU, right? Um, and that was all done online via Google Hangout this time around. Actually, mm -hmm. really? Yeah, which was well, I use Google Hangouts with extra with extras. Uh, this is a standard hangout. When you start a hangout, you have a choice of doing it with extras. And that includes screen sharing. And there were oh, fewer nice. than 10 people in the class. And so it was great. I would, if I needed to do a presentation, I'd share my screen. And, and it also is integrated with uh, Google presentation or Google tools, Google Docs and everything. Right. Uh, and then I would do a show and tell and they would show me what they're working on. So um, it worked great. It's still limited to 10 participants though, correct? Yeah. I know you tried early to get them to add more, <laughs> and hopefully they eventually will. Uh, I found the Google Plus to be fantastic with my MOOC. Uh, I would just have sessions periodically, and different people would come by. We learned how to drum in one of the sessions. We had um, a wine tasting in another one of the sessions, and then I actually did um, some advising in another session, which normally I would do by email or telephone. By adding the Google Plus Hangout in there, 
it really did enhance the experience for both myself and the uh, the student that I was working with.